Hello everyone and welcome to part 5 of the Sprites Alive tutorial. So last week we added the missile commands, so now the player can shoot out some little missiles. This week we're going to have a look at adding in an enemy and give it some uh, simple behaviors so that it can go around the screen, we can shoot at it and it can attack the player. Alright, so we start off with uh, the program from last week. I've just renumbered the line numbers so that everything's uh, back to multiples of 10 there. Now if we run it, okay, here's our ship. We can fly around and we can shoot in every direction, so that's nice. Okay, so first thing we want to do is we'll put in a new sprite for the enemy. In this case, we're just going to have one. If you wanted to have more, then you would uh, probably want to make um, an array, which would be like a list that then you could put all of the different enemy statuses and things into. But in this case, we're just going to do one. So the first thing we'll do is we'll add a line just after the S get for the player. And we're going to use sprite 11 because we have uh, the bullets are taking up sprites 2 to 10. So 11 is the next free sprite. So we'll say sprite 11. And we're going to use drawing 25, which is one of the enemy designs that we had earlier. Okay, we'll set up uh, an animation sequence for our sprite. And it's going to be really simple. It's just going to alternate between 25 and 26 and it's going to do that in every direction, so we just want to repeat this eight times, so it's one, okay, that's eight, and we'll give it an animate command, which will link the sprite to that animation, So sprite 11 will get sequence 2. Now we're going to set up two variables. One is going to be E status, that's the enemy status, whether it is uh, currently active or not. So it starts off as 0. And the other one, A, is going to be just set to 0. We're preparing that because that will be used later on for collision detection. Okay, so we now have uh, a sprite set up, but if we run the game, it's not actually going to appear. Okay, everything is as it was before. So we need to put in something which is going to spawn that sprite in when it's needed. Uh, now, we could just have it spawn in at the same time at the start of the game, but because the sprite could disappear and then have to spawn in again later, what I'm going to do is I'll add something to the main program loop so that if the sprite is not spawned, it's going to generate a random number. And then if the random number is uh, high enough, so it's got like a 1 in 20 chance, then it will try to spawn the enemy. This just uh, makes the game a little bit less predictable because you, you get a bit of a pause before the enemy comes back again. So, e status equals zero, and we'll create a random number. Let's say is that more than 95? And then we'll use a subroutine, which we'll put well outside of our main program loop there, at line 1000, just that way that it's not going to get in the way of anything we might want to add later on. Okay, so in line 1000, we're going to use a few things. It's going to randomly position the sprite. Now, I've already uh, kind of calculated this, so I'm just going to use these numbers here.
Okay, so that's going to give us a position for the sprite. And it will then put the sprite on the screen. And we switch on reporting for the sprite, so we turn on the collision detection. Okay, now we could just do that, but I'm going to put in a little extra bit there, which is going to check when it puts that sprite in, if that sprite is touching any other sprite, it's going to take it away and then put it back in another random position. So what we do is we'll go col test, so collision test for sprite 11. And if that sprite is in collision, then A will be set to zero. So if A equals zero, then we put the sprite, which means it takes it away. Turn off reporting. And then go back to 1000. Okay, so if the sprite is in collision, it's going to take it away, go back to 1000, and then put it at another random position. If it's not, then we'll give the sprite a direction. We're just going to set it going, and by default, the sprite is just going to bounce off the edges of the screen. And we have to set E status to 1. And return. Okay, let's run our program now. And we can see there, we have a sprite, but it's not actually doing anything. So we can see, oh, we've hit it with a missile. <laughs> and it's just stuck on that missile sprite now. Okay, so we need to give it a bit of behavior. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in another line in the main loop, so 202. So if the E status is one, we'll go to a different subroutine, which is going to do the collision detection. So for 2000, let's check if that sprite has been hit by a missile. So we're going to check missile type 1, which is the player missile, and put that into A. Okay, now we're going to jump a few lines here. So we'll say if A is 11, so if sprite 11 has been hit, then we'll go to 2060. Now we're going to skip a few lines here, then we'll say 2050 is going to be returned. So if it hasn't been hit, Let's just go straight back into our main game loop there. In 2060, it's going to be what happens if it has been hit. We we'll use the explode command on sprite 11, and we'll set up, there's a built-in explosion thing, so we're just going to do a small explosion for this. So we'll say it's got 15 particles, um, moving out, I think, five at a time, maximum size of 10, and there's no delay on that. Okay, 2070, we're going to say, because it's been killed, then status goes back to zero. Turn off reporting, because we don't need to do any collision detection. Okay, and then next we're going to say, now return to the game loop. All right, let's try running that. 
go. And so you can see if the sprite hits the bullet, it explodes and then respawns at a new random location. What if it hits us? Well, nothing, it just bounces off. Okay, so let's add in something so that the player can be damaged by that sprite. Okay, so after line 2010, we're going to then do another collision check, which is going to be checking if there's a collision on the player sprite. So one is the player sprite. Okay. And then if the player sprite has been hit, player sprite's been hit by anything, when we do a cold test, zero means it's been hit. Uh, we would then normally want to find out which sprite it's hit, but in this case it's always going to be the enemy, so we can just say, then we'll go to 2090, which is where we're going to put the player death. Okay, so 2090, we'll just have a bigger explosion than before. So explode sprite 1, instead of 15 particles, it's going to 50 and let's say it can be really big and we'll slow it down just slightly and then the next thing is once the player has been destroyed we'll just go back to the start okay, let's try that okay what happens if he hits me ah actually Nothing happens if he hits me because I forgot to turn on reporting on sprite one. So let's see, where can we do that? Let's say line 190, which is where it puts the player sprite down. Let's also say reporting on for one. it for collision detection. Now you can see that when the enemy is spawned, it's actually quite slow here because it's doing collision detection every frame. So if we wanted to take our game much further, we'd probably have to look at the compiler, but that will have to be for a future episode. For now, thank you for watching.